So here's a question that relates to regression analysis. We are having data on 10 petrol stations and the information we have is the price they charge standard petrol per litre and the market share that uh, these petrol stations have in, uh, in their market. Okay, And the first job we're going to do is to obtain the correlation coefficient between these two variables and interpret this in particular is the sign as you would expect. So we will do this, we could do this by hand but we're going to practice doing this uh, by Excel so I'm going to start Excel here and you could of course now either type the data into Excel but there is a quicker way to do that and that's what we uh, gonna do take the PDF file uh, where the question is and highlight this. So I highlight this, press Control C, and and we'll go to the Excel file and just go have cell A1 highlighted and press Control V to paste that. Now, in my version here using Windows, this now shows it as this. You can see the data are actually all in the first cell. So that's not really a table yet. We can't work with this yet. But Excel has very useful functions to make a proper table out of this. So highlight this first column and all the information, just to make that clear, is in that first column. Okay. So we highlight that and then you go to the Data tab and there's an option text to columns. So we press that and then we use the delimit delimited option here, press next. And now you can say how Excel should split one cell into several cells. And we want to split it by a space. And you can immediately see what Excel does down here. It splits after every space, it uh, creates a new column. So let's do that. There's still a couple of issues here. For instance, this title was only this title was split into three cells, these only into two. So we're gonna uh, just type in here station. Uh, price is fine, and here we want to have market share. So I type that in market share. Okay, so then we don't need the information here anymore, so I will delete that. This can go, and all these data, we'll cut them, control X and paste them, control V. So now we already have a useful table. Uh, we could absolutely work from this. I like to have my data in columns, not in rows, and there's an easy way to do that. So we highlight our table press Control C again to copy and go somewhere here just into a free cell. And now we want to paste, but we need a special type of pasting. Click on that little arrow down below, paste special. And then here's an option transpose. And of course, you know that from maths, what that does is it flips a matrix. And basically this is a matrix and here we have the transpose. And hey presto, we have the table we want to work with certainly quicker than typing and certainly fewer mistakes typically than typing. So here we go. We'll get back to uh, to that table in a moment. So let's get back here. So we want to have the correlation coefficient. Let's firstly actually briefly revise what, how do we calculate a correlation coefficient? So call that R and that is the sum across all observations. So here there will be 10 observations. That would be from i equals 1 to 10. And what we have here on top is the cross product. So we have pi minus the sample mean of p and mi minus the sample mean of the market share. And then we divide this by, and basically it is going to be the product of the two standard deviations or the square root of the product of the two variances. And so we have here pi minus 
p bar squared. The sum is again of all 10 observations and m i minus m bar squared. Now you may say, hang on, the, to calculate covariances, what we basically have here in the top and variances, we need to divide by, if we are treating this as a sample, by 1 over n or by if we are treating it as a population by 1 over 10. So we would have a 1 over 10 here if it was a population, which one could argue it is here, but you could also think of it as a sample and we have that here. But perhaps you can realize here in the numerator we have 1 over 10, in the denominator we have 1 over 10 times 1 over 10, so 1 over 10 squared, but then taking the square root, that's just 1 over 10, so this all cancels out. Let me get my blue color back. So this, and we'll just use some different notation. I now call this little pi, which is this bit. Okay, so just the deviation of the observation from the sample times little mi, which is this bit, the deviation of the observation from the sample mean. And then down here, we would have the square root of the sum of pi squared and the sum of mi squared. So sometimes it's useful to think about these deviations from the sample. So let's calculate this correlation. We'll go to Excel and we'll just calculate coral, the correlation. And this is one data series, comma, this is the second data series. Here we go. It's negative 0 0.95517. Negative 0 0.95117. So you may actually wonder, hey, when we calculate variances or covariances, Excel gives us two options the population variance or the sample variance. Why doesn't it give me these two options with uh, the correlation? And the reason is exactly up here, because whether we divide it by 1 over 10, if it's a population covariance and population variances, or 1 over 9, if you treat it as uh, sample covariances, these factors will cancel out. So it doesn't matter because these factors just cancel out. So that is the correlation. Now interpret this value in particular as the sinus you would expect. So what is that? It is very close to negative one. So that is a very strong negative correlation, negative correlation. So is that as you would expect it. So let's actually answer that question by thinking about question B. B now says, okay, use the data to fit a regression, so linear regression, which variable should be the explained variable and which should be the explanatory variable. So do we think that potentially, as we have price and market share, do we think that potentially it's the price that determines the market share or rather the market share which determines the price? So how would we think here? If market share was to determine the price, we would possibly argue in the following way. Well, if a petrol station has a very strong market position, a very high market share, it can perhaps exude somewhat market power and charge higher prices than smaller petrol station. So if that was the case, what would we expect the correlation to be? Higher market shares, higher prices. We would expect the correlation to be larger than zero. What if it was the other way around? If we were to say that petrol station which charge higher prices, what impact would that have on the market share? Well, potentially high prices to customers like that? No. So perhaps they would have smaller market shares. In that case, we would expect 
the correlation to be smaller than zero. So it turns out our correlation in our sample is indeed smaller than zero. In fact, it's very, very strongly uh, negative. So we are possibly thinking that this here may not be the predominant effect. So if we want to estimate a regression, which variable would we have on the left hand side? Which variable is x? Which variable is the explanatory variable? And which variable is y, the explained? Well, we would think of p as the x variable and m as the y variable. So we would want to estimate a regression m is equal to alpha plus beta times um, p always remembering that there will be an error term. Okay, so this is possibly the regression we want to estimate. So part C is then estimate the regression you propose above. Does the value of B have the sign you expect? Well, we would expect that beta, or once we estimate it, we get M hat is equal to A plus B P, so then no error term. So we'd expect that B to be smaller than zero. So let's do this. Let's go uh, over here. So two ways, let me just do that. If uh, you for, for now have trouble with the data analysis pack, we can calculate the sample estimate. Uh, let me do it here somewhere. So we want to estimate the A and the B. The A is going to be the uh, covariance between P and M divided by the variance of P. And the A is going to be the um, average of M minus the B we estimate times the average of P. Okay, so what we need, oh, that's that's not meant to be a formula. So what we need is the averages, for instance. So let's calculate that average. And then we just copy that. We need, let's say, the variances and the covariance. The covariance. So let's calculate the variance. Now here we now have the choice between sample and population. Turns out for the regression, as for the correlation, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. So we could calculate the population variance, and that is the variance of that. And then we copy that formula across. That's the variance of the market share, and now the covariance. So since we calculated the population variance, we need to calculate the population covariance. And that's the second variable. Okay, because if you're consistent, then the same happens as here with our red factors, they will just cancel out even for the B, for the regression coefficient. So now we can calculate the uh, um, slope coefficient, so we need covariance divided by the variance of P, so that one here divided by the variance of P, which is this one, and remember the formula was here, and this one here is going to be the average of the market share, which is this one, minus B times the variance of p. Here we go. So that's our intercept. Yeah. So now you can do exactly the same using the data analysis pack and the regression function. So regression, our dependent variable is the market share. Our explanatory variable is the price. And we want the output, uh, let's say here. And we press OK. And here we go. And now what we should see with any luck, and, well, not luck, we knew that should happen. 
of course the estimated slope is exactly the same which we calculated sort by hand and the estimated curve uh, intercept is also the same okay so we've we've done it right now one more thing i want to do is i want to print a um, scatter plot okay so here we have the market share on the vertical axis and the explanatory variable price on this axis let me just uh, add price here and uh, axis title vertical market share here market share okay so I'm gonna bring this little graph over to my uh, one notepad there we go yes our little plot so this plot will now be useful when we think about the next few questions so what we have estimated is that that slope is indeed or this estimated regression here is the constant term eight it was approximately 8.42 and then we had a negative slope coefficient which was negative 0 0.0778 times the price and that gave us the predicted market share so this is a line which will be somewhere let me just approximately sketch that in here okay somewhere located like this so part d of this question now asks us one petrol station decides to increase its price by half a p per liter what effect do you predict this will have on its market share so that is part part d well how do we interpret this coefficient we would usually interpret this that if p increases by one unit which in this case is one pence okay by one p then we should expect m to decrease by 0 0.0778 so if however the price increases not by one unit but by 0 0.5 as said in the question 0 0.5 p then because we have estimated a linear relationship we should expect m to decrease basically from here to here we needed to divide by two so here we also divide by two and that is therefore approximately 0 0.0 let me just make it short it's a if this is approximately 0 0.08 this is approximately 0 0.04 so we would approximately expect the market share to drop by four percentage points right, so this is what this regression would tell would tell us now lastly part e of this question the most difficult part of this question so the question is the chancellor so that's the um, finance minister here in the uk the chancellor is considering increasing tax tax on petrol um, petrol is of course already taxed so let's say a tax increase suppose this tax causes the price at each petrol station to rise by two percent per liter as you will know from your microeconomics courses a tax increase of 2p doesn't necessarily means that the prices will increase by 2p there's issues about tax incidence um, but let's say perhaps the, the tax increase was actually 4p but on the gas station prices only increased by 2 but let's say they increase by 2p everywhere for all gas stations so what's going to happen here well you can think of it in two in two ways either you can think of all of these points moving sort of two units to the right okay or you could actually think about the values on this x-axis changing 
what used to be 106 is now going to be 108. What used to be 108 is now going to be 110. 109 is 111. And here we have 106. But perhaps you can realize that, well, by just changing the scale here, we're actually, and if we change it in a linear way, so we add two, oh, that should be 107. So we add two units to each of these. We're not changing how the points are located. And the estimated line of fit is still going to be having the same slope. So what we will find that if we were to estimate a regression with this new prices and as the question says, the market shares stay the same. So the points aren't moving in this direction, up or down. They're basically only all moving two units to the right or the axis two units to the left, however you see it. We will find out that that new regression, M bar, will have exactly the same the same shape as the same slope and now you could think about okay what about actually the intercept how does the intercept change well remember that the intercept a is going to be m bar minus the slope so that's minus this one minus or point 0.0778 and that slope will be unchanged times the average price. Now the average price that will have increased by 2p. The market share will be the same. The average price will have increased by 2p given the information here. So what we will get is m bar minus minus 0 0.0778 times so let me just call that actually that average an asterisk because it's the one after the tax okay so what we will have here is that one is going to be the old average plus two and then you can perhaps see and let me just continue the algebra up up here. Now if we just do the algebra we can see what will happen to the intercept because we will have m bar minus and then we have minus 0 0.0778 times p bar so we are taking this times this but then we are also having that factor times the plus 2. So we are getting a plus here. So I should take this away. So plus, but then minus 0 0.007. So we're having minus 0 0.0778 times 2. And now you can see what we have here. These are now all additions, so I can actually add this parenthesis and this parenthesis here. Okay. And then okay, that's of course wrong what I just did. So let me just erase these parentheses again. So hopefully you realize that so what we can do here we are having m bar so minus minus this bit but then minus minus that bit so what we get here is that first part times p bar but then plus 0 0.0778 times 2. And let me now new, use a different color. This first element, that is just the old intercept which we calculated here. So you can calculate that if you use the averages which we 
got from the spreadsheet, you can calculate that that will be 8.42. However, now we are adding something. Okay, we are adding something to this. And you can perhaps see that best if you were to think of these moved points here. Okay, rather than moving the axis, think about moving the points. So we now have points here, here, and here. The, all these points, I'll just sketch them a little bit. They will be over here. We will have a new line with exactly the same shape, but you can see that eventually that line will cross the y-axis at a higher value. So that's why we get this higher intercept relative to the old one. But you could see that by just looking at the algebra.